Right. Uh, well, we're sort of a bit of a repeat, maybe, um, but trying to uh, go into more detail on uh, stream and block ciphers. Uh, stream ciphers, again, are operating on continuous streams of plain text, although, as noted, it's mostly not text. It's uh, usually audio or video or uh, some other streaming medium that that we see. Uh, well, it's easier to to uh, get examples now because we are more used to streaming over uh, uh, the internet, um, whereas before we were kind of restricted to uh, the examples of radio, of telephone, uh, those types of things. They uh, initially. Um, they would try to encrypt, um, uh, uh, say, telephone traffic uh, or radio traffic by having a recording of uh, noise, and um, you would have the same recording at each end, and, and therefore uh, you would play the recording while you were uh, transmitting or, or talking on the phone, and... Um, then electronically subtract that noise. Um, now, you'd be subtracting it on an analog basis. Um, and, you know, there's uh, issues of timing and, and all kinds of extra things that you have to do with regard to that. But, um, you know, nowadays, uh, we are more familiar with streaming media, streams of bits, um, however uh, that is handled. The, the stream ciphers are usually implemented in hardware because, of course, you've got the speed issue. Um, you, you need to uh, produce it fast enough to generate the key stream um, that is going to be XORed against the, uh, the data. Now, XOR, uh, again, I, I sort of mentioned this. This is um, the exclusive OR function. Um, if one or the other is uh, true, then the, the result is true. In other words, a, a one. Um, if uh, both and, uh, you know, both of them and function is true, then um, <coughs> it's not true. So it's a zero. Uh, so, if you have uh, data 1 and key stream 1, the result is a 0. If you have data 1, key stream 0, the result is a 1. The uh, data 0 and key stream 1, uh, the result is a 1. And uh, both data and key stream 0, again, the result is is zero. So um, that's that's how the XOR works. And as I say, you know, it's a gate function. It's it's very quickly um, uh, it it works at at you know the the one clock cycle uh, uh, level. So it's it's going to be fast. It is um, you know, and and hence the the implementation in in hardware for a lot of the key uh, ciphers. The, um, nowadays, uh, this is not as important because um, we have faster software. We have software that is gonna be fast enough to uh, generate a key stream, even for video. But uh, traditionally, that would, would have been there. Um, so it's, it's gonna be, uh, based on on serial communications, and uh, that's what it's most suited for. The block ciphers again. Um, we're going to operate on fixed size blocks of text, um, plain text, whether or not it's text or you know a, a, any kind of data file. Um, it's more often implemented in software. Um, and as I say, you know, um, there's, there's an overlap here when we operate a uh, block cipher in a stream mode. And we'll get into those 
modes shortly. Uh, where are we? Okay, we've gone. Uh, we talked about the initialization vector. Um, when we're talking about uh, block ciphers, there's also the data block, the, the block, which is a fixed size, um, or maximum size, and then pad it out. Uh, and then the resultant ciphertext. Um, and the, the different modes. Uh, I suppose, uh, once again into uh, random, um, the, as I say, as well as, as uh, John von Neumann said, anybody who considers arithmetic methods of producing random numbers is living in a state of sin. Um, so there are no programs which will produce actual random numbers. Pseudo-random is as close as we can get. Um, hopefully, stream ciphers produce a, a stream that looks random, that, that is as close as we can possibly get to the uh, one-time pad on a bitstream basis. Um, we can produce uh, random information. Uh, we can do it in a variety of ways. Very often, um, when you are setting up your own uh, uh, crypto keys, um, they will have you type something. Now, it's not what you type that uh, the system is uh, recording. It's, it's actually the difference at a you know, microsecond level, if possible, in in timing between your different keystrokes and so collecting those you know least significant bits um that's that's fairly close to to random um moving uh sometimes they'll ask you to move the mouse around on the screen uh again same thing it doesn't matter where you put the mouse it's it's when you change direction uh and the the difference in timing between that um, most computers these days have two actual timing chips. And because they are physical analog devices, there is, generally speaking, a, a difference between them. And so if we can collect uh, the, the differences in those uh, clock rates, um, that can, on an ongoing basis, allow us to uh, collect random information. Uh, another uh, way to uh, collect actual random information um, on a computer is a uh, hard drive. When you've got the um, uh, heads moving and the settling time um, and, and turbulent airflow being involved here, that's, that's going to be pretty random. But, you know, when, when we really want... Uh, random data uh, that is, you know, unbiased and, and uh, really, really hard to predict. Um, they just point a radio telescope at the sky and collect the background noise of the universe. Um, so, you know, it. But we can't. We can't do it with a program. Now, as I mentioned. Um, now we can possibly do it with a device because um, quantum computers uh, operate sometimes on um, a, a random basis and uh, particularly the errors that would be introduced when we can detect those. Um, they will, and, and some devices can be set up to generate actual random information that we are not actually looking for the data we are looking for the randomness that these devices quantum devices can produce because of uh well the fact that they are quantum and uh so that is that is something that um, when we actually get uh more reliable quantum computers uh, we may be able to get actual random number generation and that will be very helpful for uh, cryptography.